Alrighty, kiddos, this is uh, me going through the the packet that I handed out last class uh, that just hopefully builds up our confidence uh, with proofs and uh, gives us some good practice. So in class, we went over uh, these four here, um, and I'll do a couple of them just to just re-emphasize like, how you go about proofs and, and coming up with a game plan uh, and then executing that game plan. If you feel comfortable with these four proofs and, and you don't need to um, listen to me explain them again, then go ahead and fast forward to the video or, or you know, go to the next one and, and get help where you, where you do need it. If that's um, coming up with the best name for a quadrilateral or if that is uh, finding that fourth vertex, uh, then, then go ahead and do that. I mean, these videos are made to help you out, um, so uh, there's no need to just sit here and, and listen to me explain stuff you already know. Um, notice how I have already plotted these points. Uh, it's just so I can make this video go a little bit uh, faster, a little bit smoother. Uh, so if you want, that'd be a great idea to go ahead and pause it and just plot the points that were given to you so we can uh, just dive right in. Anywho, so whenever you approach a proof... Um, you got to come up with a game plan. You got to look at what are you given, and then where is my end goal? What am I trying to prove? Uh, so for this one, we are trying to prove that this segment uh, CP and then segment AP are congruent. Um, Go ahead and mark those in your diagram uh, just to get a good visual of, of, of what you're trying to prove that are congruent or parallel or so on and so forth. And then ask yourself, okay, how do I know, what are the ways that I know how to prove uh, segments are congruent? Um, and so we know a lot of ways. Maybe you have, it's a midpoint or maybe there's a segment bisector. Um, but the most common way that we've been using is proving triangles are congruent and then using CPCTC, which stands for uh, corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Meaning if you can prove the triangles are congruent, then you know all of the six parts that make it up have to also be the same size, same shape, or congruent. So this is my end goal here. Um, and I noticed that these two segments are corresponding parts within these two triangles. So I'm going to continue to outline this triangle with pencil and then I'm going to go ahead and outline this one in red ink so I can get a real good idea of the two triangles that I'm looking at. So I know that if I can prove this triangle is congruent to this one, um, then I can say, well, if the triangles are congruent, then the other corresponding parts are that I didn't know anything about at first. So let's see, look at what we're given and uh, see if we can execute that plan. So I'm given that segment BA is congruent to segment BC. That was, uh, it's actually already marked in my diagram with those marks of congruency. That doesn't really lead us anywhere. That doesn't um, imply something else. That's just a freebie. It's just a, a given piece of information about the diagram and uh, about these two triangles. However, the second given says that ray BD bisects angle ABC. And if you look at your diagram, you notice that that uh, angle is the large angle here. And so if that ray bisects it, we know that bisects means to cut into two congruent parts. So that means the two parts that make up that whole angle have to be the same size, same shape. And so I'm going to mark that here in my diagram. Also, this is just me kind of coming up with a game plan. So out here, this is like my rough draft before I just dive into this proof. And I'm say, okay, well that implies, this given piece of information implies that angle A, B, P is congruent to angle C, B, P. A couple things I want you to notice is that I chose point P, I didn't go all the way out here to D, because D isn't in these two triangles that I'm trying to prove that are congruent. So we want to make sure we use the vertices of our triangle. Also, um, notice my letter order, that I matched up corresponding vertices. So A goes with C, so that's why it's the first two letters, and then B goes with itself, and P goes with itself. So whenever you're trying to prove triangles are congruent, it's extremely important you keep corresponding um, letters together, corresponding vertices. So now, <clears throat> we know that whenever you're trying to prove two triangles are congruent, you need three facts. You need three things about those triangles in order to use one of the five triangle congruence theorems. 
we have side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, 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 side, and HL. So all of those require um, three facts, three congruent parts about the two triangles. So if I look, well, I was given one there. I just used the second given uh, for my second piece, um, my second fact, and so I still need a third. Well, I've gone through my givens. This first one was just a freebie, just told me something about those two triangles. The second one implied that these two angles were congruent. And so now I just need to rely on the diagram and say, well, does the diagram give me the third piece of information that I need to prove these two triangles are congruent? And it indeed, it does. We see that in the diagram, these two triangles share segment BP. So because of the reflexive property of congruence, segment BP is congruent to itself, segment BP. And we know that that's justified by the reflexive property. So now I see, and again, I haven't started my proof yet. This is just me coming up with a game plan, looking at my given uh, information, look at the diagram, just look at the entire situation, formulating a game plan, and then, once i got a good idea what I'm doing, then I'll execute that in the proof. But you just don't dive into it blindly and just hope for the best. Um, so now I see I can prove these two triangles are congruent because I have my three facts. And the, the reason is because of side, angle, side. Once I say that in a proof, then I can say, well, if those two triangles are congruent, then I know that the other parts that I didn't know about or initially, um, I know now are the same size, same shape. And that's when we can say that these two segments are congruent. So, sweet. I've got my game plan, and so now I'm just going to execute this. So, these, uh, the reasons and the statements that I give you in the proof, those shouldn't be, um, like, shockers. You should be, once you, come, once you come up with your game plan, you should start implementing that, and they should only um, just affirm what you have already thought about doing. Uh, so statement one, that's always your given, um, or givens, it just depends on what it says over here. So it tells you to write both givens. So I'm going to start off saying that segment BA is congruent to segment BC, and then also the second one was that ray BD, it's going to bisect angle ABC. Now, when we were coming up with our game plan, we said, okay, well this was a freebie, that was our first um, of the three facts about these two triangles. And then this given um, implied something. So once you write a, uh, a given, you're gonna ask yourself, well, what does that imply? And then logically, you should write it immediately after that. And so if we look at our game plan over here, it says that um, the fact that this ray bisects that angle, that implies, and it gives us our second reason. So it makes sense that it's right here. So again, this shouldn't be a shocker. It should be like, yeah, that's exactly what I had planned. That's exactly what I was going to write next because I know that this given implies that. So this is true. Why? Well, we know what it means to bisect, and we're talking about angles. And so the definition of an angle bisector. You gotta make sure you're telling the object in which you're bisecting, because you may be bisecting segments, um, so just be clear on the object that you are bisecting. So these two angles are congruent because we know the definition of an angle bisector. From there, in our game plan, we said, okay, that was our first fact. Um, the second given gave us uh, our second fact about these two triangles, but we needed a third. And so that's when we went to the diagram and relied on it and said, okay, well, what does the diagram tell us about these two triangles? And we saw that these two triangles share segment BP, and we know that it's congruent to itself. Segment BP is congruent to segment BP because of the reflexive, the reflexive property of congruence. So now in my proof, I have written my three facts about these two triangles, so I'm ready to say that these two triangles are congruent because of side, angle, side. And again, this, was, this is just all going according to my game plan. And then this right here just gives you more confidence because you knew that this is what you were going to use anyways. So it should just play right along. Um, 
From there, I need to name my two triangles. I got triangle ABP is congruent to triangle CBP. And again, make sure that your, uh, your letter order is correct. Make sure your letter order is correct so that A goes with C and B goes with B and P goes with P. Um, so now that I have that I've stated these two triangles are congruent, I'm now going to use CPCTC. And again, that stands for corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So that's why I know my last statement, this is my end goal, this is what I've been working for. These segments are congruent because CPCTC, it's because those triangles are congruent. And so there you go, you have it. Um, but the biggest thing is just like you coming up with your own game plan. I'm going to jump down here to the one that's um, diagonally to this, the one we just completed, to the bottom right. Uh, and I'm just going to do the same exact thing. <clears throat> um, little typo real quick, make sure you change it. Uh, item 4 should say side, side, side. So SSS, triangle congruence theorem. Uh, I apologize about that. Uh, so here we go. We're going to look at what we're given, going to come up with a game plan, and then we're going to implement that. Our end goal is to prove that these two angles are congruent. Uh, if we look in our diagram, um, that is this angle and that angle. So that's my end goal. That's what I'm going for. So again, you have to ask yourself, well, how do, like, what are the ways I know how to prove angles are congruent? And there's a couple ways we know. Um, if you happen to have uh, an angle bisector up here, that's one way we know how to prove angles are congruent, but uh, we don't know that right now. It's not one of our givens. Um, and so you kind of start thinking about your other ways. If we look in the diagram, we notice that these two angles are corresponding angles, meaning angles, parts that match up with one another in these two triangles. So if I can somehow prove that these two tri uh, triangles as wholes are congruent, then I can use CPCTC. And that's what we've been focusing on uh, all throughout Activity 15 and Activity 16. Uh, also, we can see down here it says side, 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 triangle congruence theorem. So that's a, if you get absolutely stuck, uh, maybe some of these clues will help you out. And you can say, oh, I'm going to use this, the um, side, 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 triangle congruence theorem. So obviously I'm going to prove that these triangles are congruent and then use CPCTC. Um, so let's, let's, that's where, where we're going. We're trying to prove these two triangles are congruent. So let's see if we have enough information to do that. Uh, the first given is that segment JL is congruent to segment um, LK. Um, this should be segment KL uh, because, like I mentioned earlier, uh, letter order is extremely important. So that's two boo-boos on Mr. Nibbins. Um, part, so I apologize about that. Um, no one's perfect. So that's already marked in our diagram, and again, that's just like a freebie. That doesn't really lead us to any new information about these two triangles. It's just, all right, I got one pair of uh, congruent corresponding sides. Uh, so we look at our second given. It says, Point M is the midpoint of segment JK. Now that does lead us somewhere. That implies a piece of useful information that we're going to use to help us uh, prove these triangles are congruent. What this implies is that um, that segment is being uh, bisected by that point. So segment JM, the two parts, and segment KM are congruent to each other because we know what a midpoint does and it bisects a segment, cuts it into two congruent parts. So I've used up my two givens. Um, this first one was just a freebie and that gave us the first corresponding uh, part that are congruent about these two triangles. And then the second given implied that these two segments were congruent, so that gives us that second piece about these two triangles. And we know we need three pieces of information to prove that triangles are congruent. And so, when we have to, so now, uh, if you've used up all your givens, you're going to have to just look at your diagram and rely on that to help you uh, to continue on with the proof and proving these triangles are congruent. If you look in the diagram, these two triangles share segment LM. So segment LM is congruent to segment LM. That gives us our third piece of information. I know the segments are congruent uh, because they're the exact same. And so in a proof, you would write it's the reflexive property of congruence. Um, the way that I help myself remember that is if you look into a mirror, you see your reflection, uh, and it's the same thing on both sides. So that's a good way to help you memorize that.